So many patients with alopecia areata identify stressful life events as a possible precipitant to the development of their alopecia areata. The relationship between psychosocial stressors and alopecia areata has yet to be fully understood. However, there exists a clear psychosocial burden in patients with alopecia areata. Patients with alopecia areata experience significant impairment to their health related to quality of life, especially in regard to their mental health. For pediatric patients with alopecia areata, their caretakers may experience similar impairment. Compared with the general population, patients with alopecia areata are at increased risk of depression, anxiety, and social phobias. The relapsing and remitting nature of alopecia areata can pose a risk of developing paranoia and obsessive-compulsive traits. Alopecia also presents a significant financial burden, with some patients reporting loss of income due to missed work. In addition to offering medical therapies, it is important to provide appropriate psychiatric support and counseling when necessary. Camouflaging techniques, such as cranial prostheses, more commonly referred to as wigs, remain an important element of patient management. In studies, access to wigs for alopecia patients has been associated with significant improvements in psychosocial health, including patient competence, adaptability, and self-esteem. Now, let's hear from some individuals with alopecia areata. Take six. I've had alopecia for like um, all my life and I'm 14 years old. I have noticed that when I have built up anxiety and stress, especially through school, um, it does affect the spots on my head. I still do have bad days. They come and go, especially when I have persistent um, bald patches on my scalp. It can be difficult to go to school and know that it's showing and I can't do anything about it. Um, there have been many <laughs> guidance counselor talks and, you know, cries at school, but it really all just makes me a better person and loving myself. I've learned a lot of self-love through um, my alopecia journey and I have really just found a way to embrace them. You know, if it's showing, it's showing there's nothing I can do. But, you know, hopefully if I continue doing everything that I can and just accepting it, you know, it, it helps. So this is my blue bandana and it's my preferred headpiece. And I've been wearing this every day since third grade. It has two ties in the back and there's a little scrunchy type thing. Although I love wigs, I think that they're so much fun. I choose to wear this bandana um, for the sake of comfort. For people with alopecia, wigs um, help them feel comfortable with their condition, help them embrace who they are. And I think it's really important that people have the choice of how they want to present themselves. Take 11. From the male experience, uh, we have to look at our counterparts, our, 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 our beautiful uh, females, and they, it's much easier for men, but that doesn't take away nor disregard our pain. What we go through in an aesthetically obsessed time, especially, is to conform our, you know, visual representation of who we are and our identity. And uh, that was taken away from me. And um, at face value, it takes away just your hair. But for me, uh, it was, it, it definitely took away from what I wanted to be. And I had to fall in love with myself, but it is frustrating. And what I learned is do not judge a book by its cover. Take three. I meet a lot of people that I tell like that I have alopecia and sometimes they'll literally be like, oh, I'm so sorry. And it's funny because I really don't, for myself, I don't see it that way. I wouldn't give my alopecia experience back for anything because it taught me that like you have no idea what's going on under here. Um, whether someone feels empowered, whether someone feels insecure and sad, you have to have kindness.